Welcome fellow freaks, geeks, and nostalgic peeps to my channel, Slime and Slashers, where, yeah, we talk about everything from Nickelodeon slime to horror movie slashers with plenty of stuff in between, mostly books. In today's video, it is a book-themed video, but sometimes we do talk about other things. But yes, as I said, today is books, and I am really excited today because I'm going to be talking about my top 10 books that I've read in 2024 so far. So, my top 10 of 2024 so far. We're only halfway through the year, but still, I've read some really amazing books. I've had a lot of five stars, and it was freaking hard to narrow it down to only 10. So let's go to the short intro, and when we come back... I will tell you the 10. Welcome back, guys. My name is Kelsey. If you're new here, hi, welcome. Please consider sticking around if you love Halloween, anything spooky season related, if you love horror movies, horror books, books in general, or if you love 80s and or 90s nostalgia, we could have a lot in common. So that is all about me and the things I talk about on my channel. But today we are specifically talking about books. And as I said in the intro, we are talking about my top 10 favorite books of the year so far. And I've got my little journal in front of me with my five star reads. And it was very, very hard to narrow this down. As you can see, there's a lot, but a lot of these are Benicula books. Seven of these books are Benicula books from the little children's series, Benicula. So let's get into it without further ado. These are not in any particular order. I'm not going from 10 to one. I'm just giving you my 10 wonderful top reads, all equal for the most part, kinda. <laughs> anyway. All right, so first up, this is pretty high on the list in terms of it's pretty close to being number one if I was ranking this list. This is The Light at the End by Skip Inspector, and this is classified as the first splatterpunk book, and splatterpunk really used to mean something very, very different. Today, it's kind of morphed a little bit and become associated with extreme horror, and it's just two different things. Old school splatterpunk is just not the same as what we think of when we think of extreme horror today. So don't get confused to think this is like super extreme. There's a grittiness to this. There is some, I think, some messaging to this that is really interesting. I love this. It takes place in old school 80s New York. Very, like I said, gritty, grungy kind of atmosphere. And we're following this group of friends as things start to go to hell in the city. And one of their friends disappears and then he turns back up and he starts acting weird. So there is a vampire at the core of this story. And apparently, from what I've been told from my friend Andrew and from what I've read online, that the vampire in this book helped inspire the character of Spike from Buff the Vampire Slayer. So I love Spike. And if you read the description of this main vampire antagonist in this book, he does sound like Spike with like bleached hair. And it just is so perfect. Like in my mind when I was reading this, I was picturing Spike, even though I like Spike's character a lot better than this, like, bad guy vampire character. But this was so entertaining, so much fun, so well written, and the audiobook narrated by Chet Williamson is great. Shout out to Crossroad Press, because they have republished this in a Kindle edition. They also have it as an audiobook, like I said, narrated by Chet Williamson. So if you're someone who loves vintage horror or who wants to dip their toe into vintage horror more... Please, please support publishers like Crossroad Press, you know, Valancourt Books, publishers like that who are keeping vintage horror alive. That is very important. Next on my list of favorite reads of the year so far, we've got The Despicable Fantasies of Quentin Serganoff. This is a weird cover and it's a weird book. You think the cover's weird? The inside is even weirder. I love this though. This is one of the most unique stories I've ever read. So this guy... He's half dino, half man. He had some kind of thing happen to him. You have to read the book to find out what happened to him. But he used to be a professional wrestler. And it's also a love story of sorts, a queer love story of sorts. He's pining over, you know, his long lost love who was a wrestler along with him. So there's wrestling references, which as a wrestling fan myself, like I used to love wrestling. I still dabble in watching it here and there, but not as hardcore anymore. But as a wrestling fan or a previous wrestling fan, whatever you want to say, I really like those 
little references quite a lot to be honest with you but even further than that it had a lot of fun other references like lots of references to the film Pretty in Pink and just if you like weird fiction I think you could really enjoy this. It, it's just a strange little book but it's a quick read it's a novella so this could be perfect if you're looking for something for a future week of weird readathon that readathon is hosted by my friends Crystal and Jason. Check out their channels I'll link them below but this could be a great read for that. It could also be a great read for my own readathon Old School April because because there are definite 80s vibes and nostalgic vibes in this book because of the wrestling references in general, which feels very old school the way they talk about it in this book. But also, like I said, the pretty and pink references. It's wonderful, zany, wacky, good time. I can easily say that I've never read another book quite like this one. So I think that's a really rare thing to be able to say about a book. Next on my list, another weird book. What is with me and weird books? I guess I really like them. That's something I started to discover last year in 2023. And as we move further into 2024, I just keep finding that I freaking love weird books. It just, the fact remains the same. And I didn't even know about this until middle of last year, essentially. So my next book is The Wind Up Bird Chronicle by Hiroki Murakami. And hopefully I am saying that right, but this is so hard to describe. The story is about everything and about absolutely nothing. It's about a guy looking for his wife who has kind of disappeared. They've been having marital troubles, but it's really about so much more than that. That's just a very tiny part of the story. The guy has all of these philosophical thoughts, but they're also just very random meandering thoughts that don't really go anywhere. But as you read along, you just kind of get entranced by the story, even though nothing is really happening. And at one point, the main character becomes obsessed with hanging out in this well. He's just like, I'm gonna chill down here in this well in the middle of my neighborhood. It's a dried up well, so it's not full of water or anything, but he's just chilling in this well and thinking about life and wondering where his wife is. And there's lots more at play, but also a lot of other stuff that on the surface, it doesn't seem to have importance, but if you read into it, it may have importance to the meaning of the story. So I think there's a lot you can glean from this story if you really like to think about it, if you like slow burns, if you like really slow meandering stories, if you're okay with some weirdness. It's not told in a traditional sense, let's say that. That's a good description. It's not told in your traditional form of narrative, in my opinion. I really had a great time though. It was five stars and this was read for my Mark Morris reading vlog where I read some of Mark Morris's favorite books and I will link that vlog below if you happen to have not seen it because I had a great time and I found a lot of wonderful reads doing that vlog. Next up, I read Flowers in the Attic for Garbogist. 2.5. It was this little mini weekend readathon back in February that Ali hosts from the channel Criminali. And you know, the goal is just to read a trashy book. You might be saying, why is a book you consider trashy in your top 10? A trashy book is not a bad book per se. It's not an insult. And I don't think VC Andrews is trashy per se. But you know, this story was kind of notorious for incest elements so that in itself could be a little quote trashy or considered trashy you know not your normal <laughs> type of story so it's a little taboo and I loved it though I wasn't expecting to connect with the writing so much and to be so engrossed in the story so it had to wind up on my top 10 I devoured this book in I think two sittings and it's only because I got tired the first night I was reading it and I just had to go to sleep but I wanted to stay up and keep reading I just was not physically able to I was like oh my eyes I can't but yeah I if I could have read it in one sitting I would have physically I would have loved to have done that because I had to know what was going to happen I had to know how things were going to wind up at the end of the book and I'm so glad that I finally read a book that I consider to be a classic so whether or not you consider it trash or you know, a little taboo. I think overall it is great. I think most people can't argue that it's great and it's had a big impact on pop culture since this book was very popular back in the day when it was released. So, so glad to have finally read it and I am beyond ecstatic that I ended up enjoying it so much that I put it on this list. Next up, surprise, a romance book lands on my top 10. Very surprising. I don't always love romance, but lately I've been finding 
I know how to pick the kind of romance I like. And it's cute rom-coms that are kind of slow burn, not too much sauciness involved. It's just a cute story that takes its time, that has characters you, you can relate to, and all of those elements were true of this book, The First Date Prophecy by Kate and Danny Temporelli. Now, Kate and Danny Temporelli are a real-life married couple, and this is loosely based, but very much also fictionalized. It's a little loosely based, fictionalized version of their actual meeting and how they came to get together. You're following this old school child star from the 90s as an adult, and he goes on a first date with this woman who's really trying her best to break into becoming a romance writer. How fun is that? So if you recognize the name Danny Timberelli, that is because he did play Little Pete from The Adventures of Pete and Pete and a lot of other roles, starring in tons of different things back in the 90s. So they wrote this together, and actually Danny does the male voice for the audiobook. If you like audio, I highly recommend this, but if you like just a cute story with lots of humor, and a lot of charm. I highly recommend this and I'm so glad I got to it. Okay, I know. I've talked about this book so much since I read it back in April. Panicula. I read not just this book but every book in the series as I alluded to earlier when I was showing you my journal of the five star reads that I had. I love this series. It is so adorable, so cute. It makes you squeal with just laughter and delight because you're like, oh, how cute. You're following this little family and their pets. Their pets are, you know, the characters that are telling you the story. We're following Harold and Chester the cat, as well as Benicula, who's a little bunny. And they're all suspicious. I say they, really mostly Chester is suspicious of Benicula, and he thinks he's like a vampire, aka kind of like Dracula, hence the name Benicula, Dracula Benicula. So very, very cute adorable. I can't say enough good things about it. Big props to Amy from Amy Noel Reads. You could find her mostly on Instagram now, which I will link in the description below. So please make sure you follow her there because she's way more active on there versus on her YouTube channel these days. But big props to her for freaking putting this on my radar because it's been pretty much one of the biggest hits of my entire year. Next up, another book that I was lucky enough to have Amy put onto my radar. So again, same Amy as before, Amy Noel Reads. She submitted this book for my Patreon jar. Everybody on my Patreon gets to put a little book prompt or a book or a movie or a movie prompt into my jar. I pick out of the jar or sometimes I predetermine a book from the jar to read for every month. And for May, it was Zombie Awareness Month, hosted by my friend Kat over at Kat's Novel Adventures. And I knew that The Rising that Amy submitted for me to read was a zombie book, so I said, I'll just read her submission for the jar this month. And it freaking exceeded my wildest expectations because guess what? I am not a zombie person. I don't really care about zombies. I'm sorry, Kat. I love you. I have fun doing zombie-thon because sometimes I find gems like this, but I don't usually like zombie stories because I think they're very overdone and it's hard to find unique ones sometimes, but there are a lot of good zombie stories out there, books and movies. But in this case, this really hit it out of the park for me. So we are following this man. The zombie apocalypse hits. He's in his basement shelter. He thinks that all of his loved ones are gone and there's no hope left for him. However, he receives a call from his young son who is living with his ex-wife and it sounds like he's in trouble, but he's still alive. So the man has some hope and he decides to leave his shelter and go on a mini journey to try to find and help his son. And more ensues from there. He definitely stumbles upon some other characters. What I love about this book is the super different take it has on zombies. Very, very unique description of zombies and how they behave compared to most traditional zombies. Like, you know, the kind of zombies that we think of when we think of Night of the Living Dead and movies like that where zombies originated from. You know, that Romero came up with. This is so different from those kind of zombies and that's what I like about it. Uh, along with a whole bunch of other things. This also had a lot of action. It was super fast paced and I could not put it down. So it definitely deserves to be on this list. And I'm hoping that even people who are kind of skeptical of zombie stories might give this one a shot in the future if you're intrigued. Okay, and another book on my top 10, Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. This was another huge surprise because 
I decided to go out on a limb and step out of my comfort zone and for my reading like kitty vlog, my friend Kitty over at the channel Spicy Cats Reads, I picked out some books that she had given five stars to to read for myself and to see if I would like them. And this one was a freaking hit. It just blew me away. Lots of emotion. There's even a romance in it that I did enjoy. But really, more importantly, I enjoyed the complex examination of life, the meaning of life. What would you do to get back to your family? There, there's a lot of things explored in this book. It's a very thought-provoking book, and I'm so glad that I was able to dig into this this year. It truly surprised me because I'm not someone who gravitates towards sci-fi leaning books or sci-fi horror even, but this one, even though it had heavy science elements, it definitely worked for me and it was one of my favorite reads from my Read Like Kitty vlog, but honestly that whole vlog really went pretty well. So check out that vlog, I'm also linking that one below if you haven't seen it because I had a great time digging into this. Up next, don't be confused, I am holding up two books, but I'm going to talk about them as one because these are just two volumes, essentially of the same book, and it is sold as one volume, and that's mostly how it's sold and read today, and that is how I would advise reading it. It is a long book once you put these two volumes together, so I think that's why initially it was sold in two volumes like this, but I think the way the first volume leaves off you don't really want to take a lot of time before you get to the second volume. It's not like it doesn't leave off on a good stopping place. So I'm going to talk about it as one collective book because that is the way I think it should be read. It is a fantastic story. So this is by Robert McCammon, my favorite author of all time. He is a wordsmith. He is a freaking genius. I will praise him till the ends of the earth and beyond. I will never stop shouting his name from the rooftops because more people should be talking about Robert McCammon. Why, do you ask? Because who else can write about the 16 freaking hundreds and make it interesting? Robert McCammon, bitch. He is incredible. I didn't think that any kind of historical story that was this old school would appeal to me in any way, shape, or form. I was really hesitant to dig into this. However, my friend Alex from the channel The Bookubus, she buddy read both of these volumes with me, and I'm so glad because it gave me that nudge I needed to finally dig into this book, or these books, and I am so glad that I did because you really come to love and connect to the main character, Matthew. Matthew is a clerk, like I said, in the 1600s, and he's going with his magistrate to preside over this witch trial. This woman is accused of witchcraft. You know, people are saying that she is destroying the town, making people sick, making people leave, destroying the crops, yada, yada, yada. She killed people, they say. Was it her? Is there really any kind of witchcraft in here? Or is there something more afoot? This is essentially a mystery story, and I would even call it a slow, slow, slow burn mystery, but I loved it. If you love character development, like extremely well done character development, I think you could really like this. And if you don't mind a lot of setting the stage and painting of pictures, I think you could really enjoy this. For me, his writing is so easy to absorb. It's so beautifully done. Like I said, he's a wordsmith and I am so glad that I gave this a chance. So thank you, Alex, for buddy reading this with me. And I'm so glad that I liked it so much that it has landed on my top 10. McCammy for life. Okay, last but not least, we've got another weird book. I love weird, like I said. So this one, the last book I'm going to talk about, I do have an honorable mention, so I'm lying. It's not the last book, but hey, the last official book on the top 10 list is A Choir of Ill Children by Tom Piccarelli. This is the first book I've ever read by Tom Piccarelli. It is a southern set kind of gothic-y novel. It's definitely a wonderful summer read if you're looking for something that has like the hot atmosphere. This one has it. However, I don't think it would work for the majority of people who watch my channel because it's such a meandering weird story. There's this guy who's living in a mansion with his brother, but his brother is essentially a conjoined twin of three. And so it, it's a very weird story in that way, but also there's more going on. Like he's like the head of a t the town. He's also trying to figure out what happened in his parents' past. I don't know. You really should just read it for the vibes. Not really a fast paced story, if that makes sense. It's so hard to describe what this book is about, but I had an amazing time reading it and I read it physically. And it's very rare that a book that I read physically captures my attention so thoroughly, but this book did that and I really loved it. But like I said, look into it further if you're intrigued because I really wouldn't suggest this book for everyone. I think I'm probably an outlier in that I just loved it to the extreme. I'm not sure it would work as well for 
most other people. But hey, that's why I always say give things a try, and if it doesn't work for you, that's okay. But it's always worth giving it a try if your, you know, interest is peaked at all. All right, and as I said, I do have one honorable mention, so it's not on the official top 10 list because it's not a traditional fiction book, it's a non-fiction book. So I wanted to shout out the book that the movie Goodfellas is based off of, and that is Wise Guy by Nicholas Pileg Pileggi? I never know how to say his name right, but apparently, I didn't know this, but the author, Nicholas Pileggi, or whatever the heck, <laughs> um, excuse my pronunciation yet again, he helped write the screenplay for the movie Goodfellas, and once I listened to the audio, the unabridged audio for Wise Guy, I could tell that he was involved in the screenplay because the movie is so faithful to this nonfiction book. It follows the story of our main character, Henry, very, very, very closely. And so if you love the movie Goodfellas, I think you might enjoy getting a little bit more information and absorbing the story in a different format if you want to check out the audiobook or just read the physical book. I just think it gives you a little extra context and... If you're a big fan of the movie, why not check it out as well? And I had a ball, five stars. It was so much fun. Okay, guys, those were my top 10 reads, plus one honorable mention, from 2024 so far. Have you guys read any of these books? If you have, what did you think about them? I'd love to hear about it. Do you disagree with how I put it in my top 10? Like, did you dislike a book that made my top 10? Or did you also love a book that made my top 10? Either way, it doesn't matter. I want to hear no matter what your opinion is on the book. And if you want, let me know what your favorite read of the year is so far. I'd love to know that as well. If you want to comment but you don't know what to say, you could also just leave me a little stack of books emoji. That would be fine as well. I really want to thank you guys for taking the time to check out my channel. It means so very much to me each and every time you guys check out my videos. And if it's your first time here, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I hope you want to subscribe and check out more of my content because this channel means so much to me. And I have really loved making a community out of my channel. And I can't wait to keep growing and keep meeting new friends and keep talking about books and movies and everything that I love. But guys, for this time, that is it for me. Till next time, you guys know what you can do. Keep on killing it. Bye, guys.